Hi, welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to make fish, a wonderful Greek dish, baked fish, and it's called plaki. You know, Greek people love to eat fish. Well, why wouldn't they? Greece is situated right there on the Mediterranean, and Greek people have all kinds of wonderful ways to prepare fish, but this particular baked fish dish is a classic. It's called plaki, and it's very tasty. It incorporates several traditional Greek spices and herbs, and I think you'll really enjoy it. You'll find this recipe and all the other recipes we've used on our website, tweeten.com. Why don't you look us up? Not only will you find the recipes, but you'll find links to other interesting Greek sites. Let's get started. To make plaki, you will need six fillets or approximately two pounds of a nice solid firm fleshed fish, something like cod, red snapper, and today I'm using red snapper because it was on sale. To flavor the plaki, you need an assortment of herbs. If you can get them fresh, that's wonderful, or you can use their dried varieties. You could use oregano, you could use dill, you could use basil. Either one of these can be used. You have to have mint, either dried mint or fresh mint. You need some fresh parsley, lots of fresh parsley, some green onions, actually not some, you need an entire bunch of green onions, some garlic, at least two lemons, and for the sauce you'll need a can of diced tomatoes, and of course what Greek dish could you possibly make without olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Put all these ingredients together and you'll have a wonderful tasty dinner treat. The first thing you're going to need to do is prepare your pan. Get a pan that's large enough to hold the six pieces of fish and put some olive oil on the bottom and brush it all over to make sure the bottom is completely coated. All right, now the pan is ready for the fish. The next step is to rinse the fish, dry it, and just lay it out in the pan. All right, you need cold water. Just run the fish under the cold water a little bit. And lay it on some paper towels to dry. It doesn't have to be completely dry, just to remove all this excess water and excess moisture. Catfish would do well for this dish too because it's firm and it would hold its shape. Now the fish doesn't have to be bone dry. All you need it to do is just lay it on the paper towels so that the paper towels absorb that extra water from the washing. Now you're ready to put the fish in the pan. Just lay the, the fish in the pan and if the pieces overlap a bit, that's fine. It really doesn't matter. It's going to all get covered with a delicious sauce and bake. Now we can give our attention to the special sauce. It's the sauce that makes this fish dish so tasty, and it's the herbs in the sauce that make it especially Greek. As I said before, Greek people love to eat fish, and my father was one Greek who really loved to eat fish. My dad was a barber, 
And so he had his days off Sunday and Monday because Saturday was his busiest day. Of course, that goes back to the days when men used to get a weekly haircut on Saturday. So anyhow, he was home every Monday. And where we lived in North Hollywood, which is Southern California, every Monday a fishmonger would drive through the neighborhood. He had a refrigerated truck that looked like an ice cream truck, except he sold fish. So, you know, our household, every Monday for I don't know how many years, we had fish for dinner that night. And then my dad would buy other kinds of fish because along with the beans that he used to take with him for lunch, he'd make fish soup, and sometimes he'd take that for lunch, too. So we had a lot of fish in our household as I was growing up, and this was one of my mother's favorite ways to prepare it. So I'm going to let you in on a family secret. It all starts with the fish, of course, and then this wonderful, delicious, tasty sauce. And this sauce needs one entire bunch of green onions. Not one onion, not two onions, the whole bunch chopped into about one inch pieces. Not little teeny slices, but big chunks. So here we go. And I do want to give credit to my husband's family. I am using an Iowa pig cutting board because my husband's family is from Iowa. When you use green onions, be sure that you remove this root section and cut off any wilted, withery uh, sections at the other end. Wash the onions carefully under running water to remove any dirt and debris. Now this is easy because you don't have to finely chop them. As I said, just about one inch sections. And why green onions instead of regular onions? Because that's how my mother used to do it. And why did she do it? Because that's how her mother used to do it. And I asked my mom, why? And she said, I don't know. Grandma used to do it that way. So there you go. It's a family tradition. Just watch the green onions. They're little critters that like to roll around and roll off your cutting board. Put them in your pan and get ready to add some more things. To the onions, you need to add about two to four cloves of chopped garlic, just depending on how much garlic you enjoy in your food. Just take your garlic cloves and give them a good whack. And the skin comes off quite easily after that. And if you find any discolored spots on your garlic, just cut it out. Finely mince it or cut, chop it as finely as you can. And now just add the garlic to the saute pan with the onions. This dish calls for at least a half a cup of chopped fresh parsley. No substitutes. You really do need the fresh parsley. So what you should do is get yourself a bunch of parsley and wash it very, very well. And then just wrap it in a clean towel and let all the excess moisture be absorbed. And that's what I've done. So now I'm ready to chop. 
All right, I'm going to be just separating the leafy green portion of the parsley from the tougher stems. And I'm just making a little pile over here. And when I think I've gotten to a half a cup, I'll stop and measure. It doesn't hurt if I have more than a half a cup. More fresh pars parsley in the fish is not going to hurt anything. But I don't want to have less. So that's why I do have my measuring cup here so I can make sure. Now when you're dealing with parsley, just take your paring knife and bring it as close to the leafy green pot as possible and then just chop it off. Leave the stem behind. Now, ah, this came complete with a weed. But that's because you grow parsley. And if you have an opportunity to grow parsley either in your backyard, in a garden, or on your deck or patio in a pot, you know, I'd recommend that. There's absolutely not one dish that wouldn't taste good with a little addition of fresh chopped parsley or parsley on the side for a garnish. I'm doing pretty well. Now this is not chopping. All this is doing is removing the stem. I think after this sprig, I'm going to chop it and see if I'm close to a half cup. Now the parsley does not have to be finely chopped. It just needs to be chopped a little more than the leaves that uh, were removed from the stem. And I just want to make sure that I have at least a half a cup. The parsley adds to the delicious herbal earthy kind of flavor of this fish dish. It's really a unique flavor when you combine parsley, especially with mint, and that is so traditionally Greek. All right, I'm going to measure it now. I'm putting it into the cup, half cup measure. I want to make sure I have at least a half cup packed because if I don't, I can go back and chop some more. And this is just perfect. So now I'm going to dump this in the pan with the onion and garlic. Here goes. Now another key ingredient to this fish plaqui is mint. Mint with tomato and parsley is a classic Greek combination. Today I'm using fresh mint that I purchased at my local grocery store. I did the same thing with the mint that I did with the parsley. I washed it very well and I dried it in a towel and now I'm going to remove the leaves from the stem and chop up about a quarter of a cup's worth of mint leaves. Now, if you could, it would be a wonderful thing to grow some mint in your backyard, but probably not in the yard because, as I've said before, it's an invasive plant. It just takes over. But if you could get a nice large pot and grow mint, it, it, it's wonderful. And what you can do is you can harvest it and then dry it and you'll have it all year round. You want to do just exactly the same thing that you did with the parsley. Just remove the leaves from the large tough stem. And for the mint, we're looking for a fourth of a cup chopped. If you didn't want to use fresh mint, you could substitute one heaping tablespoon of dried mint. I'm using the fresh mint because I wanted you to see how pretty it is and see what it's like. What am I going to do with all this leftover mint? I'm not going to be able to use it all today. And like every fresh herb, it'll go bad quickly. So I'm going to take these leaves, these stems, and I'm going to lay them on a baking sheet with paper towels and just let them air dry. And in about a week or so, they'll be dry. I'll crush them up, stick them in a bottle, and that'll be my stash of dried mint for the next few months. Okay, I'm going to give this a try. I want at least a fourth of a cup. I've kind of bunched up the mint leaves and I'm going to start chopping them now. And 
and turn it around, bunch it up a little bit more, and chop. And this is, this dish, this fish dish, is one of those home style dishes. This is something that Greek people would eat quite often. It's nice, it's decorative, it's fine for company, but it's also a wonderful just homey dish. All right, let's see if I made a fourth of a cup. Okay. Just made it. And now I'm going to add this to my pile in the saute pan. Here goes. Now you're faced with a decision. The fish plot key has to have green onions. It has to have fresh parsley. It has to have mint, whether fresh or dried. But the last herb to be added can be your choice. If you wanted to, you could use oregano. Either a fourth cup of fresh oregano chopped or a heaping tablespoon of dried oregano. You could use dill, dill weed that is. Either a heaping tablespoon dried or a fourth cup of dill chopped, fresh dill. Or you could use basil, a heaping tablespoon of dried basil or a quarter cup of fresh basil chopped. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about basil. You know, during the summer, basil grows just wonderfully in the Sacramento Valley region. And I would recommend that everyone put some in their garden or at least try some in a big pot on your deck or patio. Fresh basil just can't be beat. It has a wonderful, delicious flavor and adds so much to any dish that has tomato sauce or tomato products in it. The problem with basil is that you get a whole lot and you don't quite know what to do with it. And when it's fresh, you really can't keep it in your refrigerator for a long time because it bruises so easily. Well, what I do is I harvest it on a regular basis during the summer and I bring it in the house, wash it very carefully and thoroughly, lay it out on some baking sheets with paper towels, and air dry it. And then I can just pluck the leaves off, crush them up, and put them in a jar. And I have my own harvested dried basil. And that's what this is. This is my own from my garden. But here's another technique that's really fun and preserves a lot of the flavor of the fresh basil. Take the basil, wash it, snip the leaves off, and lay them flat on a baking dish, one layer only. Put them in the freezer until those fresh leaves are frozen, just frozen leaves, and then put them in a plastic bag or put them in a plastic container in your freezer. And when you want the flavor of fresh basil, but you don't have it on hand, you can get it from these frozen basil leaves. And I'm going to show you what I've got in my freezer. I've got a bag of fresh frozen leaves from my last summer's harvest. Let's go get it. Okay, here's my bag. It's dwindling a bit but I'll have enough to last me until the summer. And it's filled with frozen leaves of basil, ready to be used. And this is what I'm going to use today with the fish plucky. I'm just going to dip in my bag and grab a handful of leaves. And I'd like you to look at them. Here they are. Frozen basil leaves. Still whole not chopped. And not only is this going to make the fish plaqui taste good, but if you're making a quick sauce for pasta, there's nothing like chopping up some basil that's sort of fresh. It's as close to fresh as you can get without having to make a special trip to the grocery store. So I really recommend doing this. It's kind of fun and it means you have something special that adds just a special touch to your tomato sauces for pasta or any other dish. Now, this looks like it might work and turn out to be a quarter cut. So I'm going to just start chopping. 
And because it's frozen, it kind of smashes up immediately, but that's okay. And if you end up with a little bit more than a quarter cup, it's not going to hurt anything. The more herbs, the better. The tastier the fish will be. This is good enough for me. I'm going to just measure it to make sure I have at least a fourth of a cup. Some of the leaves are still a little frozen, a little icy, but they defrost quite quickly. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to add this to my saute pan. In it goes. Add a quarter cup of olive oil to the pan. Right, as the mixture begins to sizzle and cook, you can see the, the greens are wilting. They're cooking down. You can hear it sizzle. And it has this delicious, delicious smell. It's cooked a little bit. So we're ready to do the next thing, which is to add one 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. Just pour them right in. Stir it up. Let it continue cooking a little bit so that it warms up. And then you're going to just put the cover on and let this simmer for about 20 minutes. Now is a good time to add a few shakes of salt and some freshly ground pepper. Okay, now time to cover. And turn the heat down to a simmer and let it cook for about 20 minutes. The vegetables are just about done cooking, and so I have enough time to finish the very last step in preparing the fish, and that's to slice up two lemons. They need to be sliced thinly. They're going to be laid on top of the fish and baked with the fish, so be sure that you wash the lemons and remove the ends. So just start slicing them thinly. And when you're done slicing an entire lemon, you can pick through the slices and remove any seeds you find. And use only the slices that have a lot of the lemon flesh. You don't want to use the ends where you have more rind than anything else. And examine the lemon slices carefully because biting into a lemon seed is not really a pleasant experience. This slice has too much rind, so I'm not going to use it. Now my lemons are all sliced, my sauce is cooked, and my fish is in the pan. So we're ready to prepare. Put everything together and assemble it. Look at that sauce. Doesn't it look pretty? All the nice green and the red. So we're ready to put everything together. Lightly salt your fish fillets, just a little bit. And lightly pepper. Next, spoon the sauce all over the fish. Make sure each fillet gets a good spoonful of the vegetable mixture. And be sure to spoon in all those delicious, flavorful juices. Spread things out evenly. Necessary, redistribute the fish. Now that looks pretty just as it is. But wait till you put the lemon peel on. Or lemon slices. Just arrange the lemon slices on the fish.
Make sure all the fish is covered with lemon slices. If necessary, overlap them a bit. And now it's ready to bake. You'll need to bake the fish in a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. After 25 minutes, you want to check it to make sure that the fish has flaked all the way through and is completely cooked. So, in it goes. I checked the fish at 25 minutes and it's perfectly done. So out it comes and it's ready to serve. The fish is really beautiful. It looks so nice with the bright red tomato, the green of the onions and the herbs, and the pretty yellow of the lemons. And it's quite tasty. The fish makes quite a bit of broth, and you can spoon one or two spoonfuls on the fish when you serve it. And if you have some real fish lovers, you might want to put some of that broth in a separate bowl and give them some French bread to sop up the delicious juices with. I'm going to serve it right now. Be sure to leave the lemon slices on when you serve it because they are so pretty to look at. When it's time to eat, you can just move them aside and discard them. It's a delicious, wonderfully different way to serve fish. It's got all those wonderful herbs and the hint of lemon all throughout it. And I know just the person who would enjoy a helping right now. It's Sham, our kitty. She loves to eat fish. We're going to have dinner together tonight. See you later.